everybody, and welcome to week 10 of the Home Team Friday Countdown. It's a playoff edition. The postseason begins tomorrow night for our Indiana teams. Blake and Zane are standing by, ready to break down three of the biggest games on tomorrow night's schedule. All right, this week's games are Gibson Southern and Mount Vernon. That's a rematch of a game from just about three weeks ago. Wrights will be at Boonville and in Kentucky. They're still playing regular season football in Kentucky, but this is a huge district game. Davis County will be at Apollo. All right, let's bring in the crew now, Blake Sandlin and Zane Kahn, Felter Fellas. Let's start in the 3A sectional. Probably the best two teams in that sectional meeting right out of the gates, 8-1 and one Gibson Southern at 8-1 and one Mount Vernon. Blake, this game got away from Mount Vernon three weeks ago. Are the Wildcats going to be able to flip the script this time around, have their hands full. Yeah, no doubt about it. And really the answer to that question depends on how the Mount Vernon defense responds. They had no answer for the Titans offense. 500 yards of total offense the last time around. And Gibson Southern's defense stepped up big time in that game as well. They held the Wildcats to their season low with just six points. Offense has been one of Mount Vernon's strengths this year, and they'll need it in heavy doses to keep up with Gibson Southern. Nico Burnett will need to make some plays with his legs if Mount Vernon hopes to upset the pocket champs. Blake, it's hard to believe, but Brady Allen enters his final season with the Titans, seeking his first sectional championship. Entering postseason play, you have to like his chances. The future Boilermaker has enjoyed a record year in Fort Branch, already setting season highs in touchdown passes, completion percentage, and yards per game, all while throwing fewer passes. Allen saw the same defense earlier this month and threw for five touchdowns. Randall? Yeah, he is having just an outstanding year. Uh, Mr. Football type of year. So we'll have to see if that uh, Mount Vernon defense can somehow manage to slow him down at all. All right, in the 4A sectional, Wrights is at Boonville. Disappointing seasons for both teams, but we all know a sectional win will ease some of that pain from a rough regular season. Zane, you have the Panthers. Yeah, and Corey Brunson has enjoyed postseason success before within this same sectional field, Randall. And Wright centers with a 3-6 and six record, but the Panthers were more competitive during the regular season than what that record would indicate against a tough SIAC schedule. Jay Smith is a talented back, rushing for 100 yards or more five times, including a 206-yard game two weeks ago, coupled with fellow seniors Nate Staley and Alex Clark. The Panthers have enough to advance Friday. Well, Zane, it's been a frustrating year for Boonville. Three of their losses have been decided by two points or less. But the Pioneers have some momentum after winning two of their last three games. Clay Connor has been a versatile threat for Boonville and should cause problems for this Wrights defense. If the Pioneers can slow down the Panthers' running game, and that's the big if in this game, they can stay alive for one more week. Randall? Yeah, I think this game has a chance of being one of those sneaky, really good games. Uh, in the postseason tomorrow night. Uh, Darren Warren's done an outstanding job at Boonville. So uh, I think this one may be a, a one-possession game, a one-touchdown game. All right, let's head to Kentucky now. Still two weeks left in the regular season. Apollo and Davis County are both contending for a district championship. Zane, John Edge is getting it done at Apollo in his third season. I've talked about John Edge's dynamic offense, but what about the defense? That's the big question mark for the Eagles entering tomorrow's game. Against the Panthers, Joe Humphreys in two losses for Apollo. The Eagles surrendered 40 points or more. That put added pressure on quarterback Christian Combs to keep up, and I believe he can. Last week in a 28-14 win against Marshall County, he threw for 220 yards and a touchdown showing accuracy, too. Well, Zane, Davis County put up 38 points against a vaunted Henderson County defense last week. Now, that's a bad sign for Apollo. Joe Humphreys is putting up a convincing resume for Mr. Football in Kentucky. He can do it with his arms and his legs, as he's shown all year long. And unless Apollo can dial something up on defense, I like the Panthers to move to 8-1 and one on the season. Yeah, I think it's going to really come down to guys on whether or not uh, Blaine, or Zane was talking about that Apollo defense. I think yeah. it's going to come down to if they can stop Joe Humphreys because Blake is dead on. Humphreys is putting up Mr. Football-like numbers this year, and it's going to be really interesting to uh, to see what happens tomorrow night. All right, uh, Zane, in about 15 seconds, where will you be tomorrow night? Where will folks be able to follow along? Knox County, South Spencer, North Knox in that two-way opener. Zane underscore Claude Fulter and next week in the Spencer County Journal-Democrat. Randall. All right, thanks much, guys, and as always, great job. We'll see you on the football fields on Friday night. Don't forget, Home Team Friday, tomorrow night, 1035, over on ABC 25. Eyewitness News 9 will be right back.